Hey guys, it is Patrick. Before you get started with understanding debits and credits as well as how to do journal entries, I wanted you to know that if you go to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com, you're gonna find links to all eight lessons in this series. So if you get turned around or you don't know what the next lesson is or how to get to there, you can definitely go to my website, click on the next lesson, and it'll take you right back here to YouTube where you can view the entire lesson. Also, in the description section below, I've put a link to where you can purchase the notes for this series so that you can just sit back, learn more about debits and credits and doing your journal entries and you've got the notes right in front of you to follow along. So if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com to purchase those notes as well as see all the links for this next eight lessons in this Understanding Debits and Credits and Journal Entry series. Until then, let's get going with your lesson. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about the difference between components and accounts and how accounts helps us organize all of the different transactions within each of our components. So that's what we're gonna talk about here in this lesson, understanding components versus accounts. So let's take a look at what these two mean and how they work together to help us create information that is useful to the decision maker. So in accounting, we know that we start with the understand, we start to understand classifications with six main components. We've got assets, liabilities, owner's equity, expenses, revenues, and dividends. So those are our six components that we've been talking about. And we also said that every economic event that occurs in a business needs to be classified into one of the six components. So if we have an economic event or a transaction, we need to be able to classify it into one of those six components. Now, for companies who have hundreds, if not millions of transactions or economic events, using six components to classify every transaction does not allow us to provide useful information to both internal and external decision maker. It's kind of like, you know, if I gave you a financial statement and all it had was assets, liabilities, owners, equity, expenses, revenues, and dividends, and I said, oh, our revenues were $25 million and our expenses were $15 million. And you could do the math in your head and go, okay, we've got $10 million in profit, but what's the breakdown of the expenses? Like, did we overspend on some categories? Did we not overspend? Uh, if I just say, well, we don't, we don't separate it that way. We just have expenses and expenses were 15 million. It doesn't give you good information that you can make good decisions so that maybe you can decrease the expenses to $10 million or $12 million. And so we need to be able to segregate all of our transactions in a little bit finer detail than just one of those six components. And that's where accounts come into play. Now in accounting, we use something called, we use a dual, dual layer of organization approach when it comes to organizations of economic events. So when we organize economic events in the accounting information system, we kind of have this dual layer approach to how we organize them. The first thing that we have is components. Now components are the main category we use from a macro standpoint when organizing the financial statements. Now we don't categorize individual economic events at this level. So what we mean is that when a transaction happens for an organization, we actually don't classify it into the asset expenses, dividends, revenue, liabilities, or owner's equity buckets first, okay? So if a transaction comes, we're not necessarily classifying that transaction into one of those six buckets. Instead, we are gonna classify them into an account, and then we're gonna link those accounts to one of these six components, one of these six buckets. That's our dual layer approach. Now, accounts is where we're gonna link the actual transaction to. So this, this and accounts are the subcategories we use from a micro standpoint in the entry point for economic events in the accounting information system. We categorize individual economic events at this level. So what we're saying here is that when we have an economic event, 
we are going to categorize that economic event into its different accounts. All of those accounts are linked to one of the six components. That helps us keep a little bit of organization when it comes to all of the data that we might have to process when it comes to economic events that affect the company's basic accounting equation. So we have accounts and those accounts are part of components. Now, understanding accounts here, individual accounts can be called or labeled anything. And I wanna take this with um, a grain of salt here. We can label accounts pretty much anything we want, as long as what we're labeling it matches the intent of what we're trying to categorize. So for instance, when we talk about payroll expenses, we can categorize payroll expenses as either payroll expenses, salaries and wages expense, wages expense, salaries expense. All of those pretty much mean the same thing, which is we paid some employee to do some work and that is an expense to the organization. So it doesn't really matter what we call something from an account standpoint, as long as it makes sense. So another instance where maybe we, we are using utilities and we get this utility bill. Well, I'm not gonna classify that utility bill into um, payroll expenses because that doesn't make sense, right? I might need something a little bit more finer like utilities expense or electric expense. However we wanna deal with it, we need to categorize it based on what is actually happening. So I wanna be clear here that Individual accounts can really be called anything. There is no like standard list per se of what you need to use in your business. And I say that, but I'm gonna talk about a specific list I'm gonna to give to you in the notes. There are no standard account names. So at the end of the day, this is definitely true. If I came into your business or I came into a business, I can choose all the account names I need to, to make it so that I can, or I am able to take the data from the organization and convert it into useful information so that decision makers can actually make decisions with the information that I got from the organization. Now, with all that being said, when learning accounting for the first time, we use some standardized account names just so that there's a level of understandability. So, you know, when we think about learning this for the first time, I'm going to give you account names uh, that are more or less standard of how we would teach someone accounting. But then when you go off into the real world, you might change them based on what makes sense for your business. For instance, most company most companies do not have an account called cash. And it sounds weird to say that, but most companies don't have an account named cash. What they have instead is an account name that is based on their bank account. So if they have a checking account at Wells Fargo, it might be the account name might be Wells Fargo checking, and then it would have an amount. And if they have a savings account at uh, Chase, it might be uh, Chase, um, savings account and then maybe the number and then that would be the account name. So again, you know, uh, there is a standardized list that we use to teach you, but that doesn't mean that that's what happens in the real world. Now, some are kind of given like cost of goods sold. It's probably used often in the retail industry. Uh, sales revenue used in the industry a lot. Um, if we wanna break that down, we can definitely break that down as well. So just understand that. Now in the notes for this series, there is an example of charts of accounts. There's three pages of chart of account names. And these are kind of the most common that we would use to teach first year, first level accounting students, just so that they can get those names in their heads and then they can start playing with those names and changing those names based on their own situation. Now, what I love about this worksheet here is that there's four columns. The first column is all of the basic account names that you might come up with or uh, go through when you're starting to learn accounting. So I'm looking at the very last page here that's facing me and I see at the very top it says interest revenue. So that would be the account name, interest revenue. Then the next column tells you which financial statement you're going to find this in, the primary financial statement. So interest revenue sounds like a revenue, which means it's going to be an income statement account. So in that second column, it's income statement and there's balance sheet as well. Um, uh, as far as statement. Then we've got type. 
So the type here on the third column tells us what type of account is this. And I can tell you, students often get confused on trying to understand what type is this account. Uh, rent expense, what type of an account is that? Prepaid rent expense, what type of an account is it? And sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not so obvious. So that third column tells us type. So in this case, interest revenue is a revenue account. And then the far right, which we won't talk about here uh, very much, but in this kind of worksheet it has it, is uh, whether or not its normal balance is debit or credit. And I know we haven't talked about debits and credits. We'll get to that in another lesson. But what it's saying is that after everything is said and done and we get an ending balance in all of these accounts, this account is usually a debit or a credit. In this case, interest revenue on the far right hand corner at the very last column, it says it is a credit account. So it's normal. it normally has a credit balance. Does this mean that this could never have a debit balance? Not the case. Does it usually have a debit balance? Not usually, okay? There may be a rare instance where it does have a debit balance, but in this case, it would have a credit balance. So this is, I would say, a worksheet that is very powerful when you're first learning accounting and trying to understand what accounts we have, what they are, what financial statement are you gonna find them from, and then what's that normal balance. All right, let's kind of bring it back to components and accounts for a few minutes here. So each account belongs to one of six components that accounting classification is based on. So here are some examples. So for instance, we've got assets, right? That's one of our components. Some accounts that would be part of an asset or are an asset would include cash, accounts receivable, and equipment. So those are accounts within the component of assets, okay? Every account has a component, okay? Then we have liabilities, accounts payable, notes payable, bonds payable. All three of those are liabilities, and so those accounts represent liability components. Then we have owner's equity. Examples of accounts under owner's equity would be common stock, additional paid in capital, and retained earnings. We also have revenues. Often used is sales. We also have sales revenues and then service revenues. In the expense column, we might have something called cost of goods sold, rent expense, office expense. And then finally, we've got dividends. Dividends, distribution, owner's draw. Now, let me make a distinction here. So everything in light blue are accounts. And all of these accounts are tied to a component, one of six components. And it's important to understand that these accounts can't be part of two components. They can only be part of one component. So it's vitally important to understand which component does this account um, belong to so then you know how the debits and credits work, but also if you're classifying it in the right report on the financial statement. So overall, think of an account as an extension or a subcategory of the components. We never book account, we never book a transaction into a component, we book a transaction into an account, which is part of a component. An account can only be classified into one of six components, so we can't have an account that is part of assets and expenses. It's either assets or expenses. An account can't be part of multiple components, so we can't do any of that. So this is a look here at accounts and components. We have six components, and all six components have their set of accounts that we use to classify further an economic event. So super important that we understand that because when we do journal entries, we're gonna be using accounts, not components. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking over here. And for more accounting content, make sure you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or clicking over there. And for the next lesson, just click right over here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.